Hi, welcome to MyHealthyHouse.com, your home page for home maintenance, improvements, and repairs. I'm Dwell Williamson. After inspecting thousands of homes, we found that most homes aren't in optimal condition. Most importantly, homeowners today simply don't know how to give their homes enough love. So we've developed this video series to help those homeowners maintain, repair, and improve their homes. I inspected this house about um, two, three weeks ago, and they've negotiated for a new roof and I've been hired to go up and inspect this roof for proper manufacturer's installation instructions. So we're going to take advantage of this time to go over the proper way for a roof to be installed and the typical mistakes that are made when asphalt shingle roofs are installed. The edge of the roof where the water runs off is called the drip edge. The drip edge typically there's two or three problems with a new installation. Uh, one would be the starter course the starter course is the course of shingles laid down first as a roof installation is put together. Uh, on top of that goes the first course. So what you typically see on the drip edge is the first course, which is this piece. The starter course is actually the piece below it, this piece here. So what's supposed to happen if the starter course is put down correctly is that the first course actually adheres to it. Now this is the typical case of a starter course not installed correctly because there's no adhesion. These are not bound together like the rest of the courses will be. The other issue is the felt underneath the shingles has no drip edge flashing along here. It's a metal strip that uh, basically just protects this piece of drip edge molding from water damage over time. Some of the penetrations on a rooftop are other points of contingency when it comes to new installation. Uh, one thing that needs to be looked at is where the flashing is located. What I mean by flashing is basically the boot, which is this piece that uh, the items penetrate through, have a piece of flashing. That's this piece here. These are usually nailed down or stapled. In this case, they've sealed over the nail head, which is perfect. Over time, those tend to leak. Um, same thing on uh, furnace vents and water heater vents. We have what's called a storm collar. It's this piece here. This protects basically the boot or the piece below where the vent pipe penetrates through. The storm collar should always be low over the joint and sealed as this one is. This is an example of the furnace vent. The first was the water heater vent. Furnace vent, same thing basically, making sure all the uh, nail heads are sealed, which these are, and the storm collar is down tight as well. The chimneys are probably the one penetration in a roof that are known to leak the most. Uh, in this case, we're missing the cricket. Crickets are required per building code on any chimney that is 30 inches wide or greater. Now in this case we have a lot of surface area that is above the chimney up to the ridge where all this water is going to collect and divert down on top of this area. So a cricket is basically a piece of sheet metal in most cases or sometimes a constructed roof that diverts the water around the chimney to prevent it from blocking up. It also prevents debris from blocking up behind the chimney which can cause damage. Another name for a cricket is also a saddle. In this case the flashing as well at the bottom end especially and uh, in many cases along the top uh, corners is nailed down as well with exposed nails so those should all be sealed and as in this case they are sealed. Now one of the most susceptible areas for water damage on a chimney is going to be the bottom corners. In this particular case as I push down on this area you can see that it actually moves quite a bit. So in this case it's very likely that there is some water damage that these guys have shingled over and not repaired. In a lot of cases the guys that put these roofs on they're in a hurry. They've got a, you know more jobs to do. And the faster they can get this roof on the lower the labor costs are. Problem is if you install the shingles in a way that exposes any type of nail head, this becomes a leak point. It usually doesn't happen right away, but it can happen very quickly depending on how uh, the roof wears. Generally we'll have uh, water penetration at an exposed nail head like this maybe 10 to 12 years down the road. Now what we should see actually is uh, no, what you shouldn't see, are no uh, nail heads exposed around any shingles. So each section of shingles is called a tab. This is a standard three tab shingle installation, probably a 20 year shingle. Now another very important thing to look at is the way that the tabs or the shingles are fastened. And you do that uh, by just lifting up some of these new ones. As, as the roof begins to get hot from the sun, this 
uh, adhesive strip along here is going to glue down this tab and make it pretty hard to get up without damaging it. So looking at a roof on a cool day or looking at a roof right after the installation is the best time. The butt edges, basically where the two shingles come together, these are supposed to be three quarters over from the butt edge, generally speaking. This one is a little bit further, but the problem I have with this particular issue is look how deep that that um, nail has been driven. The problem with that is if I were to pull this shingle up as if the wind were to get underneath it, very little of that nail head is, uh, the, the point at which the nail head compresses down on the shingle has actually caused some damage. So by doing that, uh, this tends to lift off the nail head easier by uh, compressing the, the, the area underneath the nail head. So as you go up, looking at these, you're going to want to look for consistent patterns as well as um, distances from the butt edge. That one's a little further than we'd like to see. Uh, that one's a little closer than we'd like to see. Plus, if you look at this nail to the left, it's actually driven at an angle. Same issue. If wind gets underneath the uh, tab and lifts it, especially if the angle is pointing over toward the uh, point of the shingle, then we do tend to have more of a, a wind loss. That one's far enough away that uh, required a second nail to go in, which was good they did that and caught themselves. So, checking these areas at random is the best way to determine whether or not that the uh, roofer did a good job putting these on. One thing I noticed also is that uh, it looks like there were a couple of different guys doing this job, which is usually the case. In this case, one guy was using nails and the other guy was using staples. And same issue with the staples. If you have the staple at an angle going this way, it can be a problem because as the shingle comes up under the wind, this holds it down better than if it were pointing this way. If it were pointing this way, it would actually tear across the shingle and come off real easy. This is actually not correct as well. To be right, it should be parallel with this edge of the shingle. So we should see those running this direction only. But again, these guys are in a hurry and the idea is to get out of here as fast as they can so they can get on to the next one. And often they're not standing in a perfect location that allows them to hit these things straight because of their wrist angle, so this is how they go in. And the area of the roof where the water does not roll off is called a rake edge. This would be a rake edge along here. The rake edge along here basically is um, the area that water does not typically run off. Uh, rake edge flashings are recommended. Uh, drip edge flashings, as we discussed earlier, are required. Now, this is a plumbing vent. Um, these are a hybrid rubber metal flashing for the boot for a plumbing vent. I'm not fond of these, especially in the south. These uh, take on an enormous amount of um, uh, UV radiation from the sun, which anything made of rubber like this is, it's going to really get beat up by the sun. It'll probably last the 20 years that the shingle is supposed to last, but I have seen it fail prematurely. Also, the plumbing vent is supposed to be painted with a latex paint to prevent uh, UV damage from the sun as well. We're happy you found our video series and we hope you find it useful. Don't forget to visit MyHealthyHouse.com and register your house for a free profile. By creating a profile, you'll be kept up to date on maintenance notices, green improvement ideas, and conservation tips based on your home's characteristics. You can also find contractors your community relies on. Get registered and make your house the best it can be. I'm Dwell Williamson.